Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Design Recharge. I'm your host, Diane Gibbs, and today it's just me. So we're doing something that I haven't done in a while. I used, I really try to do it once a month. Um, I, it's inspired from my friend um, Adam, who does Makers of Sport uh, podcast. He does this thing called Halftime, where he was kind of giving um, advice or talking about something. So I have these things that I'm going to be talking about, and I know you can't probably read them that fast, but hey, Alan, good to see you. Hey, Regime. Um, anyway, I'm glad to have you guys all here. So this hopefully will be a little bit faster. Of course, I always say that, but I didn't like plan slides like I've done in the past. So one of the things, so what happened is I've been just crazy busy. This past weekend, I had to work for two clients. One client was doing a pitch competition, and you know, we were changing slides. He was practicing. He had to do a practice round on Sunday. And then the other client had something due on Monday, but they wanted me to show him on something on Sunday. So it kind of just blew up and I didn't get my questions to Tara and Brad. Oh, it just started raining. And so I was like, okay, I'm not going to stress about this. I'm just going to get it to her on Monday. And really normally that would be such a stressor to me that I hadn't done this. I usually say I'll get it to you by noon on Saturday at the absolute latest, but usually it's like Thursday by five or Friday by five. So I was already off kilter, you know, and I'm doing this daily challenge, which you know, you're kind of like, where are your priorities? My husband's feeling a little less uh, important. You know, there's just a lot of other things that I have going on that I needed. That I, everything always takes, you know, uh, priority. And it seems like sometimes maybe is that just me that relationships tend to be like, okay, well, I'll get with you later. And so anyway, not a good thing, especially not for your spouse or your significant other or whatever. Um, so that was kind of a struggle. And then I just didn't get, so I let design recharge be on the back burner. But anyway, on Monday, so I sent her early, early on Monday, and then I hadn't heard from her to make sure that they were okay. Cause I was going to send y'all the questions on Wednesday or yeah, Wednesday. And I wanted to make sure I was going to set it up on Tuesday anyway. Cause that's how, anyway, do it the day before I usually do it on Sunday or Monday. If, I've already gotten an approval. Not that you probably care, but here we go. So I, um, she calls me and then, um, and she was like, is there any way we can reschedule? And I was like, absolutely. Hey Dave. Um, I was like, we can totally do that. And to me, she was like, is this something, is this like a regularly scheduled and I'm really going to be screwing you up? I'm like, to be honest, it is regularly scheduled, but this is a blessing because I just needed a break. I needed relief and I just felt like God was like, boom, we're going to make it so it happens. So today I've like, I did a little bit of client work and then I've been doing this other thing that I've been trying to work on. I haven't done my skateboard deck yet. So I know, awesome how that works out for sure. Michael. I, anyway, so what happened was it's about how you look at an opportunity. So my client who had the pitch, that was on Tuesday night. So I was able to go to that. He did terrific. It was just him and five other or four other people. And he didn't win. But again, he saw it as an opportunity. So it was an eight week class. And it was about um, for business owners, small business owners, and they did a ton of marketing stuff and a whole, just a bunch of financial projections. I mean, he learned so much and he didn't win $10,000, but he got $2,700 just for doing this. And I'm, he's like, I see it as a win. And I'm like, I love that attitude. And I think that that attitude is so contagious. And I feel like when a client comes to us or we're kind of complaining, I feel like if we can be the one that's not complaining and just be, and I know it's like the Pollyanna kind of look, but I really do feel like it makes a difference. Did you know that if you take a pen or a pencil, whatever you like, and you put it in your mouth like this and you hold it there that you will literally feel happier? Like it, because the muscles are making your face sort of smile, that that's one of those things. So if you're feeling down, I mean, these are little tiny things. I'm not saying if you're like super, super depressed, just put a pin in your mouth and you'll be fine. It's definitely not what I'm saying, but I feel like it is, it is so important to focus on what 
is happening um, because you never know um, that's positive. I focus on what's happening that's positive because I feel like so often we just focus on the negative. And what that says, if you are the complainer, what that says to the other people around you, whether you're doing this in a Slack channel or you're doing it with your spouse or you're doing it so privately, um, but what that says, then that's how they see you. They see you as dark cloud. Who was that character on Peanuts um, that always had, uh, maybe it was Pigpen, but I guess I, you know, think of it like, thank you, Carly. I always think of it like Pigpen. What, I don't think Pigpen was negative. I just think it was dirty, you know, but what if that was it? Instead of like a pile of dirt that flew around Pigpen, you were like the dark cloud. And every time you come to a different group, you're bringing the dark cloud. That's not, nobody wants to be that. But I feel like what happens is, and this happened a long time ago. Yeah, Debbie Downer. What happens um, is that I was complaining about a uh, situation in a relationship. And with this friendship, I just kept complaining to other friends about this one friendship. And I realized, I was like, I don't have to be friends with this person. You know, I can, this was my choice to be friends with this person. So I can either let them go or I can stop complaining and start looking at what they do that's positive. And that made a huge difference to me. And so I just started focusing on all the things that were just amazing about the person. And it really changed. It changed how I thought about them. And it also changed just how I started looking at the world. And I know that seems, maybe that's really bad. Maybe I shouldn't have told you guys that, but that's really what happened. And I wanted to, um, it really made such an impact to me. Like if you don't necessarily really like your job, complaining with all your friends probably isn't, the best way to do it. I don't know. Sometimes it's about self-talk. So what are you telling yourself about your job? Or so what can you, how can you take it? Because what happens, I think, is that people want to be around people who are encouraging. And Chris Doe talked about this, about the vacation test, that when they go on vacation, are you like, wait, they're gone? Or do they have such an energy of positivity and energy that when they come back, you're like, oh my gosh, we totally missed you. You want to be that person. Even if it's not the ideal situation, I know that most people are not in an ideal situation at work. I mean, unless you work for yourself, I feel like there's always going to be things we could complain about. So this, I didn't really want, this was like one part of my thing. So I'm going to move on. I think having a positive app, attitude is um, amazing. Oh, and I was listening to this podcast because I listen to a lot of podcasts. Hey, Jeremy. Um, and it was, uh, it's um, the story brand podcast with Donald Miller. And I don't know which episode because I was mowing. I'm, I got so many bug bites. I don't know if you can see that, but I got them all over my neck. Anyway, and I got stung by a wasp yesterday. It was just, I, but I have, love mowing. So anyway, in this podcast, and I don't know which episode it was because I've been a little behind. But they talk about how fueling your uh, brain was um, much like two tennis players and that the difference between two tennis players, that these were, uh, you know, pro tennis players, they were winning Wimbledon or whatever. What was the difference between the ones that were um, um, winning? It wasn't that they did uh, – they were doing something different with their – they had a stronger – uh, whatever that thing is where, you know, what do you call serve, a stronger serve. Um, oh man, Austin, I am so jealous. He's attending a story brand session and oh man, I totally, I totally want to go, but I'm not going next week, but I will. I think in the next two years I can um, afford, it. I think it's like $4,000 a person. So it's a kind of big, uh, anyway, so back to this. So they were talking that what the difference was what they found was it wasn't what they were doing in like during the match. It was what they were doing when they were um, in between the points. So they would switch hands um, and rest their regular racket hand. They would drink a lot of water. It was also when you asked them when you, when they started investigating and they did this with CEOs as well, how much water they were drinking. And this blew me away because I'm not a big, I mean, I drink some water, but 
since I've read or listened to this, I have been drinking so much more water because it is fuel for your brain. So I was thinking, this is my, this is how I do it with school or whatever. But say you're teaching a workshop, like Dave, you totally teach workshops all the time. What if you um, brought in water and it was like in my classroom, there was going to be a water jug and then I'm going to give them water. Just like if I was a coach and they were exercising, this is, this is exercise for your brain. So it totally made me think that your brain is able to recover better. Did you know your brain is made mostly of water, more, more water in your brain than any other part of your body? And our bodies are like a lot of water. So it, um, so always drinking water before, during, and after. Absolutely. But not just for you as a presenter, but for them as attendees. I feel like I need to have like a water cooler in the, in the classroom so that they can, I can be like, Hey, you need to drink some water. I know that seems, maybe that's a little too much. Austin, what do you think? Would you have drank water if I, if I had you in class and you were like, Austin was one, is one of my kids. So I don't know. It, it to me, understanding that it was um, a brain refresher was completely amazing, and I didn't realize it. So it helps you um, recover faster. And they also said, like the decisions that you make, you want to make those decisions earlier. They were saying that judges um, earlier in the day, if you're going up for parole, you're sixty percent more likely to get a parole. Um, in a positive in the mo earlier morning. And then at lunch, by lunch, nobody's getting parole. And then after lunch, people have had a break. So the judges have had a break, but their decisions are less accurate or less um, based on anything because they're not replenishing their brain with water. I just think, thanks Austin, I'm glad you would have. Anyway, so I, I just wanna encourage you guys, this to me is another kind of daily challenge. To be it's an hourly challenge. If you notice, I am not drinking water right now. I didn't, don't have any water. I'm just drinking my Diet Dr. Pepper. But I'm really like, this is only my second Diet Dr. Pepper for today, which that you might think, me, but I don't drink coffee. So anyway, so I thought that was really cool. I wanted to share that. So I think how we react. Yes, I think I already drank a water like that, a bubbly water. You just want to make sure that they don't have any um, sugars or saccharin or anything like that, I think. Um, Jeremy asked if LaCroix, or however you say it, LaCroix, I guess, um, how we say it in the South is LaCroix. Um, so how, anyway, um, how you react to clients. So to me, um, I think having a reaction, and I think as a leader, if you have other people under you, I don't care if you're a leader and you have people above you, but you're a leader. Do you know what I mean? I don't think you have to have a title to be a leader. I think it's how you react. That's going to help you move forward in your career. And also, I really do think that you have to have that attitude of, well, what could I learn from this? And how could this help me to be better? And I think that's having humility, right? Um, and you can't be defensive because – so. Most of the client work that I do is not super sexy, sorry. It is more or less, it is reaching the goals of my client, which it could be a, um, y'all can really hear that because I can really hear it. I'm going to go, oh, where can I go over there? They're screen printing, spraying down the screens. Anyway, um, and I get so distracted. This is what it's like in class with me, isn't it, Alan? Right? Anyway, um, La Croix is what um, Jeremy said. Um, see you soon, Dave. We need to catch up for sure. So reacting to clients, I think it makes you a leader if you react in a way that's not, um, you're not so sensitive. But when a client asks you to do something, you still need to have boundaries. I don't think that you just say yes and how can I change that? I think I, I learned something from Ian Paget by saying, hey, you know, this is really the best solution. I could do this other thing, but this is just a waste of time. And I think it's, it's about all those things kind of wrapped up. So reacting instead of being reactive. So maybe you need to try some breathing exercises. I don't know if anybody's like that. They just blow off the handle like those people. I do not want to be around those people. 
like those are not people that are attractive to me or you know you never know when they're going to fly off a handle or how they're going to react to a client or even how they're going to react after the client like i think that there's so much stuff that goes on outside of design in design that's these soft skills and it's about learning it's about understanding how to react or why you feel so hurt that they said that or defensive um and so when i was talking about some of the client work that i do is not super sexy you know but what really matters is that i'm getting back with my client and that they aren't um that they're making their goals so i don't feel like everything has to be in print or ca everything doesn't have to be super modern um Although this design challenge, I have used that as a fuel for it. Um, it's not necessarily how I'm able to design because my clients don't always um, require that. And I think that that's a really big part of, you know, if I was doing something that was more UX UI, more cutting edge with something that people in their 20s and 30s, I feel like you have to you have to be able to do something like that. But that's not always what my clients are. And so it feels maybe it's just me, but it feels like then my designs aren't as people don't like them as much or they're, but you know what? I'm paying bills. I'm paying for my house and making about, so I work at school and then I make about 30,000 extra dollars a year. And I think that's success. So that was the next thing is how do I define success? Success is that my clients are reaching their goals. That if it's a, um, a retirement residence in Colorado that they don't have any vacancies like that is success to me and and that they have a waiting list and that has to do with the design reaching the audience that it's for it's not gonna win a design award more than likely it's not do you know what I mean all right so success to me with the skateboard challenge and I'm gonna share my screen real quick so you can see if you're not familiar um, I am part of this pro group with Chris Doe, and I know I'm not logged in, um, but anyway, I don't follow myself, I guess. Um, so it started on June 1st. I was already late on June 1st. Um, at June, for, I think I did one and two. I think you guys can see my mouse, right? Not that I can see because the chat's not up anymore, but if you look at this, and I don't think I can zoom in, but this is just a pattern and it's like a three bar and then another three bar this part you know what i'm talking about on like an envelope and it's up there in the upper right hand corner underneath where like no postage necessary so i just repeated those here and then i'm just doing something really basic blowing things up that i don't necessarily get to blow up and i didn't really understand about the front of the board was not the hero the hero should be back here and I just loved that eight. And this is Dupla. It's a typeface. I just really like it. I And I think I used it for, for this stuff up here. I've used it with a client. Um, let me see. Oh, I can pull up the chat. Never mind. Um, so I'm just going to the... Oh, thank you, Karina. I appreciate it. It is a great eight, don't you think? Um, and <laughs> Daryl says, sexy doesn't always pay the bills. And I think that that's absolutely correct i don't think none of these skateboards are making me any money how i would love to make money doing them but these aren't making me money if this is what i want to do then i need to start doing um the next steps which means that i can't just do these promos or these these projects i actually have to do something so that's where the marketing kind of comes in but i wanted to also mention so at the beginning there was this code inside this envelope and it was dwmrs and dw means double window and i still don't know what mr is i would think mail or return or something but s is self-sealing so that's the type of envelope it is which i think is really cool kind of so i just let that be one consistent that went through the whole thing my goal was really to not repeat any of the um i didn't want to repeat any of the um patterns but i repeated one yesterday but i was about not to do it yesterday so i was like you know what i'm just gonna do it 
Um, my other thing and another challenge is I don't feel really good about color. And so I wanted to just really do something. So this actually is the inside of this envelope really is blue. So there you see there's double window. Um, and then I realized I needed to show you zoomed in because if you just look at it, it looks like squares. And I was like, no, you know, if you look at it, it really is circles. So that's why I went with this sort of circle pattern. That's the pattern repeated. Um, your greens. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate it. Hey, Susan. Um, reminds me of railroad crossing. Totally. I, um, I totally see that as well. So then I went to this one and this was where Chris was like, Hey, your, your front is better than your back. And so I was like, okay, so there is this tiny little arrow and I know you can't see it, but you can see where maybe where I'm circling. And I think I have it zoomed in, but so on this, this was a permit, like a permit number, 2198 and it was from Madison, Wisconsin. So I was like, I'm just going to include that. I did scan um, the thing and it was like a gray. So I just went ahead and in grayscale and um, I know Alan said, I never knew there were so many patterns inside envelopes. Um, I really, I, I did because I've been collecting them for years, but I think that that's been the thing that people have enjoyed is the unexpected and I always say the best best design is unexpected. It's hard to kind of come up with that. Um, but I also, this is like the little barcode at the bottom that I think is really beautiful. I don't know if like, I know Dave's not here anymore, but anybody in the UK, I'm not sure if they have what their kind of mail system is. Um, and Karina said this is and Karina is not the only one that has said this to me but um, she just said seriously I'm looking at envelope from a totally different perspective but it is this like patterning and to me this one's really intricate it kind of has like a tribal sort of quality um, let me show you the inside so there's again the double window even though some of these weren't double windows I just kept with the DWMRS but um, see that little arrow? Do you guys see that? Can you say yes in the chat if you do? But look at how cool, like, can't you see this as like a, um, thank you, thank you guys. Um, like if you turn this over, doesn't it sort of look like a totem? Like I could see this and I'm like, ooh, I probably will go back to this one. This one is really intricate and I think that these little arrows are, um, I, are little jewels. So that's why I went and did a big arrow. So I just drew over that arrow, blew it up, and I drew over that arrow so it would be there. And then I just kind of put things on different angles. So this, I don't really like this side, but I do like this side. And I'm learning as I go. Um, this one is probably one of my favorites. I, um, this typeface, and I told um, Karina, this is one of my favorite. I've had this typeface for probably 10 years. It's called Numbers. And then they have a bunch of different, just like you have black, uh, thin, whatever. These um, have, there's like depot, like train depot, because I just love old trains and the big numbers like this. Colt is very similar to this by Maddox Schuler of Fort Foundry, just so you guys know. I don't know what his numbers are, look like real good, but I have used that typeface on a project that I actually did win an award. Maybe not was so sexy, but it, I thought it was really clever, to be honest. It was about the Civil War. Anyway, um, but so there's a whole bunch. There's like an indicia and it's like a little bit thinner, but it's all instead of light black, whatever, it's a whole bunch of different like bank draft numbers. Um, oh, that's awesome. Brian says Colt is available in the Adobe type kit. Most of the Fort fonts are. That's incredible. Anyway, I really like this pattern also. So again, I didn't redraw this every time. I'm just kind of do, using the same one. And then those are those four lines and I just um, extended them out. But I like this and it was just um, gray. So I, I do really like that. And one of the things I'm trying to do is show a little bit of the envelope, you know, and that there's these seams, you know, when um, I, I kind of like that. So somebody was like, oh, are you recreating all of these? And I am redrawing some of it, but I'm not redrawing all of it um, because I really like some of these worn areas. Um, I think they're just beautiful. And if you notice, there's down here next to that screw, I redrew them in black right there. Just one set of the pattern. And then I, you have it right there as well. 
I don't know if you guys care about this or not, but anyway, this envelope is kind of obnoxious. It's very, very blue, but I really kind of liked it. And I had bought some wood grain because I was like, oh, I'm going to, I've seen some um, surfboards that have that. And I really love surfboard design. Like that would be something else I would love to do. Um, but anyway, so I just kind of took this. This is those three or five um, lines that are not at their, if you have the envelope thing and then it's the, or the um, stamp thing, and then it's like next to it. Um, it's like random. It looks random to me. I don't know. I didn't do all the research into that one, but so this is after Chris is kind of telling me, okay, the front should be, you're going to have grip tape all over it. So you're not really even going to be able to see that. So I was like, okay, so then this one, you can kind of see the envelope and then what it looks like inside. I mean, I think you want to see the inside, right? Like zoomed in. I mean, if at least that's what I was thinking. Um, I totally think so too, Jeremy. Snowboard designs, um, totally, totally think so. This is, I've just repeated that same thing. I probably need to do another one. And then this is just another inside of the board. But this mock-up is from Creative Market. And you actually can choose your edge color, your wheel color, your iron color, um, your screw color. Like it's pretty amazing. This one sort of felt a little Miami Dolphins, I guess. Some people were like, yeah, and then some people were like, meh. But, um, but that's that one. So it kind of looks like cheesecloth to me, but it's light. You know, that one was really obnoxious. This one is from South, where I work. Um, these are those, I guess there's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six lines that are next. I thought there were five, but there were six. Um, I just love this. And this was a pretty big pattern. Um, I loved the color. I just loved it. It so a lot of times these are really, really small. This one was not, and I think that maybe this is why it stood out, but I've saved it. I just think these are like that little shape is really pretty. These shapes, anyway, just really like this one. Or maybe that makes them even more fun because they're not around for forever. Yeah, maybe so. Then I did another, somebody really liked the wood grain. Um, I think his name's Caleb and he's in Tennessee, always abounding. And so he's like, I really like the wood grain. I really like this pattern. So I decided to do something different in this one. This I'm still using that reply mail from um, Wisconsin. So I just repeated it. And then I probably did too much on this one, but I put like those little dash lines just cause it kind of mimics these things. Um, but I really like this pattern. It looks like shorts to me, like a really preppy kid wearing shorts. Like, I just think it's really cool. And I should have probably blown it up even more. These are actually not squares. They're circles and they're like wonky a little bit. So I just really liked them. All right, let's keep going. Probably don't need to see all of these. This sort of looks like that, um, old grate that was over like your heating element or something like in your old apartment, or maybe it was like on a, a ceiling kind of tile where it was a intake valve or something. I just think it's beautiful. Again, I really liked from that one, maybe it was the day before. Yeah. Where I did small and then big. Cause I was like, well, I think people want to see it. So I did really small here. This was supposed to be really on the tip. Didn't work. So, um, I had a, a my parents live outside of Athens. So I did all university of Georgia colors and I did um, uh, the zip code. Because again, I'm just thinking about things. I love numbers. I just think numbers are really cool. It's kind of like this universal language. Um, they totally look woven. I think so many. Brian says, go dogs. Um, I guess I put more on this one. So I, I mean, that is intricate. This sort of reminds me of the Prayer for Designers um, logo a little bit, Brian. And let me see. And then I did a zoom in of this. And then this was, I, I just thought sometimes it's kind of cool to see it zoomed in. So I put some extra ones. And then this one was one that didn't make the cut. So I had this line and it was like part gray, part white. And then I made this sort of ribbon, but it was just too much. So I took it out. Um, <laughs> Paige likes that one. So. Um, this one I really like. I love this envelope. It's, and I don't know if it's just because I love the envelopes or what, but I really do love the envelopes. And I also just love the that a six and a nine are so similar in how they're drawn. Um, 
<laughs> Paige says blue stripes are her weakness. Um, so again, I went, um, I'm making stripes with the stripes and then I did thick thin. I'm really trying to use some of the same elements on both sides. Um, you can, this obviously was a single window, but I didn't change the thing, but now we all know what that is. And I just think those lines are just awesome. I guess I like the color too. This is that gray one. It looks like I used that gray one again. So maybe it wasn't the first. And then this is what I hate, but oh, well, I had already pushed it out. This I repeated and I was trying to, you know, change things up a little bit and I did not change where this was. I mean, exact, like, oh, that is so painful to me. But, oh, well, just the way it is. I really like how this comes together. It has this, like, V thing coming in. Um, you'll see it in a second. But I think maybe it's, I like the big three, but, you know, maybe it should have been small because this is the, anyway. I, I'm really kind of battling on this, but you kind of see this is more kind of cheesecloth one. Okay. And then this was the one I did two days ago. Um, I took this envelope, this envelope, when I put it through, I have a little doxy go. That's all I've been scanning them on. It's 600 DPI. You can scan 300 DPI, but it's really small scanner. You just feed stuff through it. I really like that. If you guys, it's like for receipts, it's like supposed to help you with taxes. I got it on like a mighty deals or something. It's like $129 back then to me. I love this thing because I can put it in my backpack and then I can scan as I go and I don't have to um, necessarily bring something home and put it on my big scanner deck or thing, but it's never done this before. But I think because the envelopes were having a little bit of trouble going through because sometimes they're a little thicker, or whatever, because they're more, anyway, um, it started warping. I thought it was so cool. So again, I just repeated the same pattern. This is those same five lines. I'm just extending them out. But this pattern, I actually started doing it with the one I did yesterday. But see how cool that looks to me? It was like, whoa. And I started thinking about how when we're driving, um, you know, the lines are really close, but then they start kind of like morphing as we go, like in the, the lines in the road. Um, and it sort of is what that felt like, you know, anyway, I know I have never done any drugs people. So this is just how it, how, how I am. Um, but I just thought it was really neat. So this is probably more consistent of real. And this is the, it's like pulling it. So something got stuck in the scanner. And I always think there's maybe some beauty in some of that as well. And this would be really sucky if you're listening to this and you're uh, not watching this. So this is a repeat, and I think I just repeated one I had done. I, it was a blue one, and I just changed it to grayscale. And then I ended up making, I did another, um, uh, so that's something I'm working on, Amy, because really it's gray, black, um, or blue. And maybe there's a couple different shades of blue that are in a security envelope, so I wanted to make sure that I was pushing myself color-wise. So I just got out my um, uh, my Pantone chart and I said, okay, I'm going to choose one pop color. And I chose the yellow. It was kind of a yellow green. And then I was like, okay, I'm just going to choose something in it, within um, an analogous color range. So colors next to each other on the color wheel. So I choose like a, a seafoam color. And then teal was not too far away from that. It was actually pretty close. I think there were one page away, which obviously tells you it's really close. Um, and then I just made the pattern be the color, like the kind of like you do with a duotone. The scan had to be grayscale. And I took the background out and I made the pattern take over that color of the yellow or the blue. Um, I'm not sure about the cut wheel color on these and I'm really not sure about the iron color to be honest, but at least I got it done. This was like way past my bedtime. Um, thank you. This, I really appreciate you guys. Um, and so the pattern was from an envelope. Let me show you which envelope it was. Oh, well, I think I put it in there. So it's, do you remember that one that was kind of faded and I talked about it fading? This is the envelope, but it was just blue. And so I just, I mean, I just drew over them. I blew it up and then those little pieces, I actually had 
like a pattern, a woven kind of pattern going through here. It was just too much. So I took it out. Maybe I'll use it again. But I, what it's teaching me doing this daily challenge is one, it's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. I did not, I'm going to um, pop out. So for me, um, can you sure? I, um, I don't have them here, but you know, if people have been sending me them and I would love it. If you want to send me some in the mail or you want to scan them in for me, I would love to have your envelopes. If you see something that you think I might like, I actually did a project a long time ago. Um, and I can put it in the show notes and I used the, um, envelopes as the water and it was like a Loch Ness monster. And so I created a collage with it. So I really like. I've always liked envelopes, so it's not really um, something I had thought about um, new, you know, it, but one of the Chris's prompts was, hey, do something that you really like, and you're looking at it, there's this guy, Steve Ray Boyne, R-A-B-O-I-N, you guys should check him out, he's doing a ton of home improvements, so he did all these, maybe I can pull it up real quick, I love this guy's stuff, um, Let's see. Um, boogers. Okay, let me. Steve. I think it's A B O I N. Yeah, there we go. Look at these. To me, these are killer. He started with this one, this Milwaukee. So this is not like the beer. This is a um, uh, a, the tools. So he's doing all these home improvements. So that is what he's doing. He's get, taking. The, his challenge from uh, power tools. So like there's the DeWalt one, um, the Makita, Stanley, oh, let's see, um, Gorilla Glue one. Yes, I think these are just really awesome. The Bosch, that's the kind of drill I have. So he, you know, went through and he started showing, you know, some of these things he was pulling out. And I just think, I think that is what is cool is that you can find something in these that this one, I was like, I don't know what this is. It's WD 40 people look at, and he did all these different options. I just thought that was so amazing. And I think it's something that we see and we're so, it's so recognizable that we do overlook it. And then how can you make it amazing? And so to me, I thought his was really cool. Um, and I've really been impressed. Just the simplicity that he's using, I think is really good. The John Deere, I think is really good. This is like a grill, a smoker, Weber smoker, Hitachi. I think this is for tape, maybe. The super glue, yep. I just like some of these that are real abstracted. And I, I think that's what I'm just enjoying so much on these. Um, but you can check him out. It's just Steve, S-T-E-V-E-R-A-B-O-I-N. So tell him you saw him on Design Recharge. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, him and I have been talking. But with the daily challenge, it is difficult. I thought, oh, man, I've done a weekly challenge for six years. This won't be a problem. So we had a choice. The pro group, uh, Chris wanted everybody in the pro group to do something. One, you could do the daily skate deck. Or two, you could um, do a, um, a survival kit. And so it's like how to survive weddings if you're the mother of the bride or how to survive a camping trip with six, you know, middle schoolers or, or whatever, you know, some, something you were hopefully using some humor with, but it was something that I, and I thought that one was really cool. And you're having 30 days to do it. And then they're actually going to produce all the things. And then they're going to photo, uh, get photos of them. And then we're supposed to produce one of these um, boards. So I'll probably do a vote at the end of which one um, I should get done. Because I have a skateboard over there. I can totally put it on that skateboard. I mean, obviously not the front because the front's just black, whatever tape. But it is what it is. I can do the back. Um, the hero, because I didn't know that. So with the daily challenge, it's been extremely hard for me to finish every day. I haven't done the one for today, um, but it's just really important for me to keep going. And I also felt like, you know, I got a bad start. I didn't start on time. So I did two in one day and it took me like six hours, but I had a blast. 
But I really felt like, okay, well, I'm going to do something. So time is really important that it doesn't take a lot of time. One, that I'm using things that are within um, kind of this framework of postage, you know, um, and so that I'm not kind of recreating the wheel every time. There are some other parts of postage that I want to pull in that I haven't used yet. Um, but there, even when you're doing it, and I'm getting a ton of, um, I've gotten more followers. So if you're looking at analytics, so I think we learned from Scotty a couple weeks ago, he went and took from Perspective Collective, he took it from a business account back to a regular um, personal account and his numbers went up. I've definitely seen a jump and then with this challenge on top of it, I've seen a jump in my numbers. I don't know exactly what it is. If you look, I'm not using a ton of hashtags, um, but one thing that was weird was I was limited on number, a uh, character count. I always put my, um, my whatever little diary thing in to um, notepad or, or text edit. I know people probably make fun of me using text edit, but I use text edit. And uh, thank you, Brian, so much. Um, one of the, so, and I put it into Instagram and it said I had too many characters. I, has that happened to anybody else? I, I was blown away, to be honest, that, um, hey, Megan, I didn't realize you were here. Or I think it's Megan. Um, um, <laughs> I'm glad, Amy, it's not just me. But anyway, so I felt like, so I feel like, you know, it's, I haven't even gotten to day 15. This is halfway. I'm not even halfway there. But my goal was to use different envelope every time. I've already busted that one. I haven't been able to do that, but that's okay. Like I'm, that's not a huge goal, but I would like to use as many unique ones as possible. And the other challenge is to just start pushing myself. So these are all graphic. They're all going to be graphic. I want it to look like a series. Um, thanks Megan. I'm glad it is you. I thought it was you. Um, the other thing is that I really want to work on my color palette. So I want to do something that's going to help. But what this has already told me, like uh, I've gotten so much great response and now I need to stop itching. Ah, it really itches. Um, one of the things I need to do is one, I need to work on color. So I'm going to use this as a tool to work on color um, and, and color palettes. And two is that I've gotten a lot of great response um, how could I incorporate some things for me, maybe, that were incorporating this kind of design for maybe design recharge or something like that? Um, and that's where, like, I'm still in the valley. Like, this whole series is about um, from struggle to soar. I don't feel like I'm soaring by any means, not soaring yet, but I don't know if anybody ever really feels like that. Somebody's always ahead of you and somebody's always behind you. So somebody's always looking up to you to where you are and somebody's always um, looking back and being like, here she comes, she's coming or he's coming. And I feel like um, that's a great idea. Alan says, uh, have you thought about building color palettes from the objects around you? I really like that idea. So maybe I could use my little um, owl, maybe his color palettes. I really like this little guy, but maybe it's some things that I am attracted to. I've, I just really have kind of wanted it to be like that last one was really summery or pop or the Georgia one or whatever. Um, yeah. And, uh, Paige says the Adobe cooler, uh, for color palettes. Um, doc says, Hey doc. Um, he says Kyle Webster has a great way to build color pal palettes. I'll have to check it out. Um, um, anyway, sorry, reading that. I also have used something called design hyphen seeds. So you, you look at a photograph and then it pulls the colors from the photo. I really like that one because I really like photos, I guess. Um, but I think that me being in the, in the valley with this is that every day, sometimes it's a struggle to get this project done, but there's been so much encouragement. Um, and so uh, Tara and Brad talked about at Creative South and in their talk, they talk about, um, gosh, I wish I had my notes right now, um, but they talk about this, you're living for that, um, oh, did somebody like it? You know, that, that sort of, um, it, it is, I do believe there's endorphins that come out when somebody's liked something, but that really doesn't pay the bills. So unless I get people who are making skateboards or snowboards or, or, um, 
whenever uh, surfboards to like what I'm doing. It this is just really an exercise, and that's absolutely fine, absolutely. Um, and I think that's good. But one of the things that I want, thank you guys for these. I'm gonna or or Doc, thank you. I'm gonna copy those and I'll put them in um, in the in the uh, whatever I call it show notes. Um, but one of the things. I think, and this is where I get distracted and it's hard. It's easier when somebody else is talking. I don't have to read the comments and do both, but oh, well, we're going to make it work. Um, oh, it's what am I going to be known for? And you know, so defining success as paying the bills, that's great. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily how I just want to be defined or that's not how I just see success. I do see me, I think what we do as designers is we help businesses' dreams come true. Like whoever's the owner had an idea and they wanted to get it out into the world and they need us to do that. So we're helping people's dream come true. I feel like, like we're the Make-A-Wish Foundation sort of, but for entrepreneurs, because if they don't have us, they're more than likely it's not going to make it. You know, you see a lot of great products that just flop because the visuals or the communication wasn't there and people were confused or whatever. Um, but when I get stressed, I one of my clients is doing a podcast about dogs, and she she does a, a doggy daycare and training and has some online courses and things like that. And she um, is was doing this, and I've been trying to make sure I'm listening. It's called Social Dog social dog show, I think. Anyway, it, so it's like a radio show. There's, you actually call in, you can ask questions and it's like live, like this is. Anyway, so um, she, I was driving, I had to go somewhere and I was going to be in the car for like three hours. And I was, I was like, okay, I'm going to listen to this. And my doc is super anxious. So bringing it back to anxiety, I guess. I mean, I'm sort of anxious too. So I know where he gets it from. But so Jackson is scared of everything, like the thunder, he starts barking. He's not like shaking. He's like, what was that? I'll get it. But then like when we're at the park and there's something with wheels, it's like Armageddon, you know, he's so afraid. So um, they, they're working with him on that. But there was this thing and I don't know if, you, so I um, spent quite a few years in Colorado and there is this massage thing that's called Reiki. Has anybody ever heard of that? It's R-E-I-K-E. -E. Anyway, it's like energy. So it could be hoo-ha, you know, people, I don't know, whatever. But it was just a breathing exercise. And I really would like to do yoga, but it has to be like fast-paced yoga because I this whole sitting like makes me just think about all the things that I need to do and this is a waste of time and oh my goodness. So I have this whole anxiety attack while I'm actually trying to do yoga and I just can't do it. I do think there's, I think it's called Pilates, right? A little bit faster yoga. Anyway, um, so, and I can't tell, you know, I really don't know if anybody's laughing. I have no idea. But anyway, that's what, it, I'm not so great at yoga, but I would like to try because I feel like that's a, I need to work on some things that are going to help me last longer, right? So drinking more water, things like that. So there was this breathing exercise, a Reiki exercise that you were supposed to do with your dog that was anxious. And it was like, you're, you're breathing in and there's light coming into you. And then when you exhale, the light starts radiating. So I start, it's like a protective layer um, going out and then you're, it encompasses your dog also. And she was doing this um, or, um, somebody was doing it or something and the dog got close. Oh, she was. And this dog that never was like a shepherd, Australian shepherd, who's they're really like, you're part of the pack or you're part of the people I'm watching. I'm not going to get so close to you. They're not super affectionate, I guess, or hers weren't. And that dog laid on her feet when she was doing this because they wanted to be in that good energy. And I do think there's definitely, um, they can pick up on your moods and things like that. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to try this. And so when I was in this anxiety fit the other day about not getting this stupid deck done, I started doing that exercise of just breathing it in and then envisioning just sort of like, and it's just a breathing exercise. I thought, okay, well, I could do this because I was driving, you know, I mean, I'm dry. I mean, I didn't close my eyes or anything, but I was driving and I thought, okay, well, this is a good exercise. So 
Then Andy J. Miller, I love him, love creative pep talk. He had a going kind of back to being in the valley, not knowing what I want to do, um, just solving a lot of problems for a lot of different people, kind of feel like a jack of all trades designer. I don't necessarily see that as a bad thing because I've been, I think, successful. Um, I don't care about being in a magazine. It doesn't really blow up my skirt or anything. Um, I really just want to pay my bills and make my clients happy and help them to get further in theirs. That's what's really important to me. So Andy J. Miller said that there was this girl, I don't remember who it was or whatever, but she said by the end of the year, she wanted to have a hundred rejection letters. So that meant, okay, for me, I don't even know what I'd try to write them and tell them, here's what I could do, but I could maybe do this like little project, right? Say, hey, I want to do skate decks or I want to do um, snowboards or I want to do whatever. So I could come up with some different themes. I don't think I think 30 is good. I do not think I could do a 100-day challenge. I know Andy just talked about that he had to quit his 100-day challenge. And I actually felt like that was really great that he, not that that was great he couldn't do it, but it was just his priorities were out of whack. And so he wanted to spend time with his kids. And I think that's such a really better uh, use of his time than trying to finish his 100-day challenge. So I really like 30-day. I think 30-day is hard enough for me. So I'm going to try to stick to something like that or stick to something that it's like, I thought about doing menus and I thought about, cause I really like menus. I think they could be fun. Um, doing 30 menus. It doesn't mean I have to do one a day cause I think menus take a lot longer, but what if I did 30 menus? So again, maybe not a day challenge, but maybe it's a week. I did one a week. Um, but anyway, so, Amy was saying she heard that as well, uh, that story. And how she that girl is not going to make it because she's had so many positives. She hasn't had enough rejections. But having that as a goal, and I know I, it was um, the Drunk on Lettering Girls, uh, Phoebe and Roxy, they were on uh, Perspective Collective podcast and or Perspective Co blah, podcast. And they were talking about how they have to, make 10 calls and they're just hoping one of the calls, but they have, they have that as a goal every day to make calls or send emails or whatever. And I'm like, why don't we do this? Why didn't somebody talk to us about that? And I always, when I was doing other things, there was a sales things I was listening to. And the lady was like, you know, when you go to McDonald's and they ask you if you want an apple pie with that, that girl or that man who asked you if you want an apple pie, I've never said yes. I don't like cooked fruit. So I, I always would say no. Uh, they didn't ask if you want fries. You were already probably ordering fries. But they always ask me, and I always say no, I don't want an apple pie. And so, but they don't just crumble. And I'm like, I just can't do it. I, somebody's going to have to take the register. Like, I feel like that's what we are doing. I feel like it's not them saying no. It's just them saying no right now. I don't want an apple pie right now. But maybe in 30 minutes, I will, you know, or next time, or do you know what I mean? It's, it's not necessarily a no, like never. It's a no, not now. And I feel like we're so afraid. I am afraid of rejection so much that, um, I think that's being a people pleaser. And I know Tara and Brad, were going to talk about that. So little hint on what is coming. Okay, so I only have one last thing to say. Look, I've crossed off all my things except the last one. And I know we're almost out of time. I only have four minutes. It's pretty good. Of course, it wasn't shorter. Sorry about that. Um, the change. So in changing from here's what I'm going to do to here's what I've done. I think that's huge. You know, when people are pitched to me, they want to come on the show or they have something. I, You know, like I've pretty much gone to all of y'all's websites. Whoever's in here that I can see, there's like 15, Samantha, I don't know who you are, but you'd lo love to know where you are, are coming in from. And Susan, um, I'm excited that maybe you're new, And but a lot of the other people I know or I've met and I've seen. So um, yeah, feel free to drop your website. But I, I do follow you on Instagram and I see what's going on. Um, but if you just have this project, you call me or we do a talk or you meet me at a um, whatever, 
I, I'm interested in a, a really good story, but I, it can't be something you're going to do. It has to be something you've done. And I think just like this 30 day challenge, it's a commitment. It's committing to something for a little bit longer and pushing yourself creatively. And obviously I need to drink more water because I need to be able to get this stuff down going. So I hope you guys are going to drink, drink more water. Oh, Hey Susan, I totally know who you are. Okay. Um, but I think that those things are really critical. I feel like I do that all the time. I have all these ideas. I know Dustin's talked to me about this. My sister's talked to me about this. They've said, Diane, you just got to do it. You, you know, just like, but you got to do the one thing for a while. And I feel like, I feel like, well, I have. I did design recharge for six years. I've done it, you know, like I've proven it. But this whole challenge, this daily challenge has rocked me. And so I know that it's not the same. It is, it's different. So if I were to do an illustration challenge, which I, I am, that's one of my plans, um, is to do an illustration challenge. When Nick was on back in January, one of my alumni, he was like, well, I th now I'm taking three weeks off. I'm doing however many days, and then he's doing three weeks off. And he's like, I need that recovery. And I'm like, oh, that's really good to know. But I think he didn't know that until he'd done too many back to back. And I feel like you just got to try. But for me, I was like, oh, this daily challenge thing, no problem. Totally a problem. It's been totally a problem. It's been a problem in my home relationship. It's problem, I mean, not bad problem, but, you know, it's caused stress that I didn't necessarily need. But it's also been like I've been putting, my priorities are just out of whack. So, uh, yeah, Inktober um, is a killer, I think, for sure. But so for me, here's what I've learned. One, to drink more water. Two, I need to, if I want to do something, then I just need to practice it for 30 days or do 30 of them because I think that's a good amount for me. And I do like the daily challenge because it's helping me grow because I'm changing. I'm also getting reinforcement on whether or not things are good or bad or I see things and I'm like, oh, publish sometimes it might not be perfect, but it's done. And I think that that's okay. But it also now has given me an insight onto how to use my hashtags better. And also, who would I go to? I have all different kinds of clients. Like, really, if you look, you'd be like, whoa, what does she do? She does everything. So she does nothing. I'm Walmart, you know? So it's like, where do I really want to go? And I feel like that's where I am in the valley in my design. Um, maybe it's kind of like the the people who are, so desperate they take whatever job but i also feel like there's a positive in that is that i say yes to a lot of things a yes to a lot of different opportunities and i'm constantly learning so there's a good side to it but i also feel like i know alan's doing a pattern he's doing these patterns and he's putting them on different things which i think are fantastic um alan howell um and Paige is loving them too she says alan you might want to pop your thing in there if you're still in here yep um pop in your um, Instagram there. He's one of mine too. Um, but I feel like you, um, you can use your hashtags correctly, but it's not enough. You can't let that be your only channel. You have to start reaching out and you have to start asking. For me, I need to ask questions about what I want to do because I don't know yet. I And you're like, Lord, Diane, you're 45. You should know by now. And I probably should, but I don't. And I think that that's okay too. Like I've been really happy with what I'm doing. And just so you guys know for listening, it's Instagram.com slash H-O-W-E-L-L underscore I draw. You can look at Alan's stuff. Um, anyway, I was kind of recapping and I know I'm over by a minute. So don't just gonna do just stick to it and do it and make a commitment and then be consistent. I feel like that's been something. I feel like it's something that people are looking at, but I can't let it just in there. I can't let it in with just hashtags or just posting every day. I have to start making a move. If I really enjoy this, then maybe I do create the patterns, right? I don't think I could use the scans. Um, I would could create my own patterns and put them on things. Um, and then maybe I could contact some skateboard companies or snowboard companies or surf companies and just see if 
um, that's something that they do or, or research into how to get to be an artist for those. These are not like, you know, I'm not drawing like, you know, uh, Blake Stevenson or I'm not, you know, or like Kim Pinella or um, um, all these people who are back there doing actual illustrations and they're doing that on the board. Mine are much more graphic, but I think that there's what else, what other kind of opportunities could I use this graphic look for and what could I do with it? So um, I have no idea how old I was. You would have to tell me what year it was, your thesis committee. Susan asked, how old were you when you joined my thesis committee? 2005, so I was 30 in 2003, so I was 32. Um, yeah, maybe some sticker packs, maybe there's something, but like, I think that there's, what could I do to sell, you know, or what could I do to say, Hey, here's my, so like, I think about doc Reed, he has a great illustrator, but you got to get some rejections. You know, you got to like figure out who your who would use your illustrations or Kim Panella or who at Blake Stevenson, whoever I'm, I just know cause doc's here. Um, but like what, who could you reach? I mean, you at least have a style. Like you're one up a ton on me. I don't even know what I want to do, but like it, and you know, maybe it's that you need to combine with somebody who's more like me, who uses other people's illustrations in their artwork. Anyway, I don't know if any of this, this makes sense. This is where it's hard. It just being alone. Um, but I'm trying to do some things that are uncomfortable to me too. I really like this project. I think it's been a huge, um, it's been a success because I've met the deadline and I've gotten a lot of great response. People have given me some great um, encouragement and it's helped me to realize, hey, I do kind of like that style. What kind of clients would use that style? And then maybe I can do something else in a similar vein, but maybe it's not skateboards or snowboards or surfboards. Maybe it's something else. So, you know, what else is that? So it helps me kind of, track down that river for a little bit and see if maybe there's some other things that I could do that use that, that style. If I really do like it, to be honest, I feel like I don't want to just be known for one thing. I, I want to have a bunch of different streams that are coming in because I get too bored. I don't know if you guys are like that or not. I think Brian White and I have had this conversation about, you know, doing so many things, but I feel like that's okay. Like, it's really just makes you a really richer person. Um, and I, I feel like you are able to meet a lot more needs. They're not always super sexy, but that's okay. They still help you pay your bills. So um, if you aren't, um, Paige says, hmm, could create a company that's inspired by race cars and trains. They're cool and you're European style. True. So maybe that's somebody who I could contact or maybe it's a technology company. You know, I don't know. Those are things that I need to research and then I need to contact because I love that hundred rejections. Like I just need to figure out what I want to be rejected by, whether it, I mean, I'm not, I don't feel anywhere near in my illustration style or comfortable enough, but I do, there will be a 30 day illustration. There will be, there will be, because I want to get better. Um, but it's just about, it's nice having other people doing it with me. I think that that's another kind of uh, prompt. I know Lauren Hom does prompts regularly. Um, I know that there's Inktober. There's, there's, there's um, one in April that's, um, it's like the made up sketchbook, like you are sketching, like you're somebody else um, that Roz Stendenhall does. And I just love it. It's like, maybe it's the imaginary, I don't know what I remember. Um, but anyway, if you, um, so next week I was supposed to have Drew and Whitney Hill on, they were going to talk about financial peace. They've gotten out of like over $250,000 of debt and they are free. They have two twins. Um, Drew is an art director and he works with Bob Ewing, um, at element three in Indiana, Indianapolis. And yeah, 36 days of tight. That's another one. Um, Oh yeah. Trapper keepers. That's a great idea. Austin. I totally remember. They were even around when I was a kid, um, back in the day, but, um, I can't remember 
uh, oh, so Drew and Whitney were going to be on. They're going to have to have a Saturday one, and they can't have next Saturday. So I think I'm taking next week off. Um, I will be. I've already gotten Tara's and Brad's questions. So they are going to be in New Orleans doing a workshop, I think. So anybody who's in down here, they might want to um, check that out. Go to New Orleans and see Tara and Brad. Um, but so they can't do next week. So I'm trying, and I was trying to take off all of July. I know I have Kevin Green on the 7th, I think. I was trying to take off July because I really want to update the website, and I can't be uploading new blogs while I redesign a website. So that's the goal. It may have to switch them to September or something like that, or sometime, I think August is really packed. But anyway, just wanted to kind of give you a heads up. I would love to know how you felt about today or me doing rapid recharge, if maybe I need a little bit more than just a checklist like this. Um, or if you kind of like, I mean, it really was not gonna hurt my feelings if you're like, no, just always have a guest. Like, to be honest, Diane, you're better interviewing somebody else. That's totally fine. Like, it will not hurt my feelings. It, it will relieve me, um, but if you like this, then maybe I need to do more of these. So if you're watching on YouTube, please leave me um, a like if you liked it and a comment below. I do respond. If you're listening on iTunes, you can go to rechargingyou.com and you can just type in skate decks or not going to give up. And um, then hit a comment. You can do comments on the actual website as well. Um, thank you, Susan and Regime. I uh, appreciate it. So Karina said she just finished a 36 day uh, project or type project. Um, Austin said it reminds me of being in your class. I, Austin, me and you need to catch up after you get back from um, going to, I don't know if JJ Peterson's going to be doing yours or if somebody else is going to be doing it or if, you, if you'll get to see Don, but I totally am fangirl of both of those guys. I think that they're pretty amazing. Um, so thank you guys so much for sticking around for a little bit over. And I just really appreciate you have no idea how much I appreciate you. And for six years, you made a difference. I'm not quitting. I just wanted to let you know, I'm just sucky at daily challenges. The weekly, weekly, ugh, the weekly thing I think I've got, um, not totally, because I'm totally on spastic on it as well at times. But so the, we'll still have a financial one. It'll be on a Saturday. It'll probably be a Saturday afternoon, just so you know, so you might have to catch it on the replay. But how the, and the, uh, they did the Dave Ramsey um, Financial Peace University, and they have actually were so successful that Dave Ramsey has had them on um, stage in Indiana. He's had them down to Nashville. They've been on the um, podcast or the radio show and stuff like that. So, um, <laughs> Matt, yes, I'm with you. Um, and uh, I was trying to think, oh, and Scott Beersack. So Scott Beersack, I'm pretty sure is a regular Wednesday. He's one of my favorites. I know I, um, he did this, that follow your bliss. Um, but Scott has a ton of struggle to soar kind of things. And he's dealing, doing something now, but he also his just life is like that. And he just doesn't give up. And I just love this kid. Like he's just one of my favorite people. So I'm excited to have him on. And then July, Kevin Green, and then, but I hope you come back because I will be coming back in August and bringing it. I'm telling you, I'm bringing it in August. I have no idea. I can't remember who's coming on, but do you guys like the themes? Um, that would be the other thing. I think I'm going to send out a survey. So if you can watch your emails for that, since you won't be getting an email from me next week, um, I definitely will, would love to know what you think um, about a couple things, because if not, I can, I can keep going like I've gone, but I would love to see if maybe there's a way for me to cater to you better. So anyway, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. And I will um, see you not next Wednesday, but the following Wednesday with Scott Beersack. And I, please don't make me do that math. So seven plus today would be the 21st. So that would be the 20th and then 27th maybe. So the 27th, I think, is Scott Beersack. Hey, look at David. I did afternoon math. That's awesome. 
I really am not so great. Yeah, but I'll see you before the 4th of July, for sure. Um, <laughs> he has a calendar. Oh, well, good. I'm glad. All right. Well, I'm going to say goodbye, and you guys have a good afternoon, and I'll see you in a week and a half, or a week and six days. <laughs>